since we are selling amazing organic oats in our bulk food in our your local pantry that we just started up as a sister company for Okinawa Rasa, come and go to Greenrod and get it for just less than pennies. I mean, you're, we're talking medieval times, pennies, <laughs> but honestly, that's where we need to go. We need to. Every time the grocery store puts it in a smaller box, it doubles in price. And every time they grind it a little bit finer, it is so over-processed. Over-processed food is killing us. So buy fresh, close to the field, and if you really want to have store grain for a long time, buy grain milk. And I'm probably stealing your thunder with your beautiful grain flaker. So I go and get it and then you talk about it. Yeah, sure. That's a that's a great family uh, investment. That little hand. Oh, Liam's back in the job. Liam, my sous chef. Yeah, you have to see this. You can all sound, try. You can all try this mill yourself if you like. We'll have it set up over here. Okay. Oh, Liam's going to show you. So anyway, this is a little hand mill. And yeah, kids have a lot of fun with that. You know, kids need hands on. And if you at least have their hands busy. They are not bothering you while you're making dinner, for one. <laughs> Trying to make dinner. That seems to be the, the phrase I hear often with the little, you know, the younger kids, the witching hour, and they just suddenly need your attention and trying to make dinner. But anyway, this is a great, great activity for kids and just fun. And you can take it camping or take it with you wherever you go, right? And then you've got fresh flaked oats, the best, and uh, cheap. Cheap. So cheap. Except, <laughs> you jump it on the floor. <laughs> I actually went to the store, speaking of packaging. I have like a 20, 20 pound bag at home, but I thought, oh man, I want the package to show you that it's real stone granary. So I stopped at the store actually and bought that bag for $8 or something so you guys could see them. I should go to Fieldstone and get them to give me something for that promo, huh? Anyways, they're way, way, way cheaper to buy the 20 pound bag. And uh, as I say, also oh, at home, I also have the mill and the flaker. It's a duo thing, and it's on the counter. It's a beautiful piece of work. Like, it's beautiful. It's solid like that, solid wood. And so, yeah, whenever I make, here's the thing. I bake a lot, I make the biscuits at school, whatever, and the kids rave about it, but you know why it's so good? It's because I've made the flour fresh, always. So before, just prior to making stuff, I've made the fresh flour. Well, that's the kicker. That's what makes everything taste so good. So it's investment, but it's, if you bake, it's like, it pays for itself. Yeah, so it's a jewel, it has the flour, and then the flavor, so then you can just pour it in. It's electric and it just comes out. You want some oatmeal? Okay, throw it in and open this yeah. up. Yeah. I see green when I see people throwing those over, over sweetened package. And don't even let get me started on hurt loops. <laughs> like some of the things, honestly, it's not even food anymore. And is it any wonder that our kids have all these food sensitivities? And anyways, that's the rant for the day. I might have another one. <laughs> um, I have a tip. Um, I don't know, is anybody here into making green smoothies in the winter time? Good, with a good blender? You need a good blender, otherwise it's just like the texture doesn't get right. Well then I guess this tip's useless. <laughs> You do. Okay. We have a lot of cucumbers going at the moment. So I slice them up, put them in Ziploc bags, and I use them as one of the ingredients to my smoothies. Same with you freeze your, you know, overgrown heads of lettuces, Swiss chard, some kale, some parsley, and I make those, I put a mix in a, in a Ziploc bag. And I work away at these during the winter time, so I don't have to buy organic salad stuff that comes from Mexico.
usually it's a week old before it gets there, or it's shipped by plane. And they're telling us that we need to green up. Uh -uh. <laughs> it's a distribution of food that is so skewed. It's crazy. Yeah. There you go. She's the good news. <laughs> I can get fired up too after. I can get fired up. Talk about you know bringing good food in the schools. It's a hard, it's a hard call, you know, when it comes to families and food. And people don't really want to. If they're not willing to make a change, then they you know put the brakes on. So it's, it's touchy. Food is touchy with people. It really is. I've learned to walk, tread very carefully, dealing with, with the masses. You know. It gets into guilt situations. Yeah. Cheese slicer, rip like a Dutch cheese slicer, 
bang, bang, you've got beautifully uniform, quick, soft little cucumbers on your sandwiches. And uh, away we roll, great lunch. And I can highly encourage you to buy those crackers. They're phenomenal. <laughs> because they were noodles. They were stringy things. What you see and the red tastes like licorice. And the mother from that one little boy who had had one vegetable since, I don't know, probably since he was finished breastfeeding. Who knows? Phoned me up at night. My boy came home and he said, Mom, I had the best vegetables. That was the beginning of a new life for both mom and her son. Just image, different, different presentation because we all love noodles. But of course, noodles is a grain product. I mean, you know how grains are grown. And the latest report on grain, of course, you now have short grain. Prairie grain used to be Four feet high, blowing in the wind, and it is now this short. Two 
mistakes. Nothing goes back in the soil, right? The straw part. The fields are bare for, what, six, seven months? Not good. And to add insult to injury before the wheat is harvested, it's sprayed dead with, uh, what do they call it? Um, well, a glyphosate, but it's called as a, a drying agent. You know the little pouches? Desiccant. That's what it's sold for. And I kid you not, they say organically grown. Well, maybe, but they spray it after it's harvested. It doesn't count. So, and all these gluten intolerances, or it's not the grain, people, it is the glyphosate that kills our gut, pokes holes in our gut. Bingo. You see the picture? You see, oh, you know, it kills little insects, way far too big. But you add beet sugar, soy, wheat, they tried flax. Um, that kind of stopped because they couldn't export it to Europe anymore. Europe bans. They grow regular corn in Holland. And most European countries, not all. It's been banned there for a long time. And we can't get rid of that nasty stuff for no one. Okay, back to the good news. <laughs> platform to catch you. <laughs> that, that is well, here my jaw dropped. Now I'm understanding something about that process. I did have a couple more tips. Two more, I think. Oh, um, oh, just fun things. Do you know how to get garlic smell off your hands? Your stainless steel sink. Do you have a stainless steel sink? This is a magic thing. You just tap it on the sink with your wet hands, like that, on your sink. And it takes the smell out of your hands. Look at this. It works. There, you came, you got something today. You got something today. Yeah. <laughs> and the other one, oh, two more. Um, walnuts. Like I said, I love the fact that we can get local walnuts. Oh my goodness. We come across, and I do have a sweet tooth. I do. So does Bruno. Yeah, yeah, very good. And uh, so he's from Ontario, so I also, we've always got a supply of maple syrup, of course. That's his, we we'll pour on everything. We raise with that, we just use it. So anyway, to make the yummiest thing ever, I was going to bring it, but I thought, now nah, I'm saving it. <laughs> so it's just um, maple syrup. Bad news on So maple syrup in the pan, just heat it in the pan. Put your walnuts in there and just stir it, stir it till it's all absorbed in there and they're toasty. Bingo, that's it. Oh yeah, and you'll put your salt in the mix. And it's the best maple walnut. You could do that, of course, yeah. I make those with my dry. I soak the walnuts just to get a little bit of that bitterness off. I soak them, rinse them, towel them off, We'll make syrup and then uh, cinnamon and a little salt. Fabulous dried. Fabulous. Yeah. See, I can do good news. Yeah, there's good news. Yeah, so that is the best thing. Now, now I got my husband cracking the walnuts. See? So you need to crack the walnuts while you're doing your. Yeah, so he's cracking the walnuts. It takes a bit to do, but we're we just washing it or something. And away we go, and I'll make the, I'll make the tasty. Yeah. And I'm going to end with the last, last, last one: shepherd's pie. Like with the hot lunch things I make at school, I thought this is a win-win. Because I'm trying to, first of all, you got to make this, and you got to make it economical, and you got to make it so the kids like it. Number one, and something that's a favorite is shepherd's pie. I thought this is the latest one I've added into the menu: shepherd's pie. So now I've, I've added in um, lentils to the beef mix. They don't really know this because it's all covered with the potato and everything else. And I put a bit of cheese on top of that and you know, things that they go for. So yeah, half of it is half and half the lentils with the other. I'm not here.
remember, I come all the way from Vernon. But I'm telling you, the schools here are... I might move here. Yeah, I don't, I'm going to use you as a bait or a collateral or as a... You know, this school district over here is giving you this. Because different districts have different perspective, different mentality. Completely like I'm just saying. Different. Oh, my God. So I'm working. I am. Taste for different. So I, I work very hard at that within the school district. And I go through presentations at their, at their district meetings and such. And we're going to do it again. Just keep. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I came to hear that. <laughs> Yeah, so just keep adding things, you know, add in cheaper, in, in the mix of the things that kids love, because you can't just take cheese out. They're not going to, you know, the things are acquired taste for and such, but just add in more veggie. I always add. Oh, there's the last tip. Okay, this is my last tip. Butternut squash, in the fall, you can get them for a dollar a piece out of Queen, Queen Anne's, or Queen St. Anne's. St. Anne's Farm in Armstrong, all their squashes are a dollar each. Now, whether that's still the same, but it's been for many, many, many years, a dollar each. So I go out there and I get the biggest squashes for a dollar, like pounds and pounds, I think, you know? And I chop that up, shred that up, whatever, freeze it, and those go into the spaghetti sauce, the, the burritos, the, you know, goes into soups, and it just goes in. So it stretches the dollar for sure, and it adds the flavor because it's sweet. Yeah, it's naturally sweet. So that is my last. Who's got the most tips? I think I do because you were talking. More. I think negative, negative Nelly here. <laughs> I just made you look good. You understand that? <laughs> But you know, the first thing that we notice about food that we should be eating is what it looks like. We eat with our eyes first. And if it looks textured or it is a sauce, if there's a raw color or anything, or there's just one speck of something left on ground and they realize it's really spinach, you're toast. Like, Honestly, I don't know who raises these picking, picking the kids, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but kids are curious. But I also know one of the local retired doctors, he heard what I was doing. He said, Afka, talk to the kids before they're 13. If they don't know before they're 13, they're gone. So when you start young enough and you do it as a family, you get their friends on board and you have them helping in the kitchen, they are curious, and they, they're hungry all the time. Wow. Honestly, they go have dinner somewhere and they come home, Beth, I'm hungry. Oh, so, I want Papa's bread. He buys cheap bread and I have silver nice bread. I mean, I can't win, you know, no, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so, anyways, it is, so much compassion for moms because their heart and their talents are so in the right place but it's more difficult because the kids are glued into social media for them to do chores you have to do this otherwise you get no phone time or you get no computer time like it's a weapon that you kind of use against them you lose them, like their eyes glaze over. They don't even know you're in the room. Tough challenge for moms. And, and my heart goes out to them.